Yeah, thank you, Chair. Could I firstly ask everybody who's not a member to put their cameras off until there's a contribution, please, if you wouldn't mind. That's fine. Thank you very much. OK, uh, Councillor Bremner. <laughs> Councillor Donnie Mackay. Present. Councillor Willie Mackay. Present. Councillor Mackey. Good morning, Alex. Present. Councillor Rees. Yeah, good morning. Present. Councillor Rosie. Good morning, everyone. Present. Councillor Andrew Sinclair. Yeah, good morning, Alex. And Councillor Nicola Sinclair. Present. Councillor Bremner, are you with us? No, nothing, Chair. OK, thank you. Thanks very much, Alex. Do we have any declarations of interest? Please raise your hand. Carl. Thank you, Nicola. I'm known financial as a uh, board member of Thurso Community Development Trust. Thank you. And I will also declare an interest in items three and four as a director of WEC Development Trust. OK, if there are no other declarations of interest, we'll move on to agenda item three, which is the Town Centre Fund, and we have Alan Webster. Thank you, Chair. Uh, morning, members. A short and hopefully straightforward paper before you today. Uh, it was only a few weeks ago we discussed the Town Centre Fund, so I don't propose to uh, go through all the background and the detail to it. But we've covered that before and we've covered it off in email briefings as well. So just to recap why we're here today, uh, you'll remember case in this area committee has been allocated £56,104. At the last committee on the 21st of January, members agreed to invest 12000 of that on the 126 High Street project, the existing project. And there was a wish to see more detailed proposals regarding improving the CCTV infrastructure in both Wick and Thurso town centres. Now, at the time of that committee, we didn't have the, the detailed information or the cost implications for that. Essentially, this paper covers that off now. So you have a residual 44,104 TCF grant uncommitted. And as I say, you were hoping to see CCTV proposals. I'll probably jump to section six now, just get straight into the detail of that. Essentially, the proposal is to uh, digitalise the existing analogue public space CCTV system and connection of system into the Highland Council CCTV monitoring office. The cost to do so in WIC is 16,100. And for Thurso, it's 25625. I understand members have been briefed on the finer detail of these uh, proposals at ward business meetings. So that would essentially divest you with of most of your TCF allocation from 2021. I don't have any issues in terms of eligibility or deliverability. It's a nice, quick project, can achieve the spend deadline of the end of March. This special committee has also provided an opportune moment to consider a variation request to an existing project we have as well. So I'd like you to turn to paragraph 6.4. Essentially, we've received a variation request from Thurso Community Development Trust. Uh, you'll remember that they were awarded £40,000 to carry out a suite of public realm improvements on Thurso High Street. Regrettably, the impact of COVID has hampered the delivery of that particular project. However, it's also provided an opportunity for the trust to review their town centre priorities in consultation with ward members and stakeholders. And what has emerged is a request to vary the approved project in favour of investing 8,763 in market stall equipment. The trust believe, oh, so I've just lost my screen. The trust believe that there will be a greater demand to utilise outdoor space in the future and that this should be harnessed in order to ensure the long-term future of the high street. It might be hard to disagree with, with that sentiment. Again, I have no deliverability concerns with the proposed variation requests. As a standalone item, market equipment is weak in terms of achieving the primary aim of the second tranche of TCF grant, which is to support the construction sector. You'll remember me saying that last time, this is economic stimulus package funds. However, when we look at that, alongside the other environmental improvements that are taking place, 
I would argue it's clear that the proposal could make a positive contribution to the vibrancy and sustainability of the high street, and that outweighs any concern there. So what I would suggest you do is you take the remaining £2,739 that you have from your 2021 budget, if you were minded to approve the CCTV, as I say, you have 2739 left, and you take 6,384 from the wayfinding budget, which is 16,000, that would give you sufficient funds to do the uh, market stall equipment, and it will leave you some money left, uh, 8,616 to be precise, to pursue wayfinding. And just finally, as the scope and specification of, of a number of these things still has to be finalised in terms of the wayfinding and the electronic notice board, I'm suggesting that Thursday Community Development Trust are given flexibility to move funds across budget headings so they're not capped at, at, at limits. So there's a wee bit of flexibility there. And I propose that they do that in consultation, in consultation with War 2 members on the understanding that they will still deliver all the outputs of the project. It just might be there's slight cost variations between each of the individual headings. That's all I have to say just now, Chair. Thank you very much for that, Alan. I think it's a really practical proposal. I appreciate you setting it out so clearly. I'll go to Councillor Mackey first. Uh, thanks, Chair. Thanks, Alan, for, for your flexibility and ingenuity in finding ways to, to take the, the town centre plans uh, a regeneration forward, because I think the uh, you know the impact of COVID, I think, has probably you know shown quite a, a stark uh, image on what we're what we're trying to do, I suppose, in in town centre regeneration. I think that you know bringing forward uh, plans that we think will revitalise the high street and add something different, I think, is very very appropriate. But we could have only have got to that point with you uh, being very very flexible and trying to find and give us a you know a, a unique route map in order to make sure that the funding packages that were available were applicable uh, for. Uh, for funders, and um, uh, in discussions that I've had with the with the other ward two members, and indeed with with Alan previously, I'm I'm going to uh, table a, a very slight amendment to the um to the report, um which I'm I'm happy to do at a later stage, uh, chair. But uh, I suppose it's just to to thank Alan for his for his work and for ensuring that you know that for the money that we've been given, that's very welcome that we we make the biggest impact in the town centres, which is you know certainly something that I think constituents and businesses alike are. Are hopefully optimistic about um, as we as we uh, slowly uh, return to normal. Thanks, Councillor Mackey, and I note that you've put the amendment in the meeting chat, so we'll pick that up shortly. Can we please note that Councillor Bremer has joined us? And I have a hand up now from Councillor Rees, please. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Chair. Um, Alan, thank you. Firstly, you have just given us an excellent lesson in how to present a complicated matter briefly, succinctly and to the point. Uh, well done. It's just that's just first class. I understood it perfectly. Following on from that, I want just very briefly to take us back in time, 10, 15 years, maybe in my personal TARDIS, that when I tried many years ago to do something about the CCTV and get it monitored uh, from elsewhere, from the Inverness, it, the cost then was so daunting, it just was a complete non-starter. So this, I think, um, is a good example of how making use of modern technology is becoming, in some respects, much cheaper. And you know, this simply wasn't feasible financially a decade or so ago. And now that it is, <clears throat> it's a really good news story. And my final point, Chair, is I approve of um, building in some flexibility to how um, the town centre money is spent with flexibility comes trust, obviously, but the advantage of trust and flexibility is that hopefully the sometimes very onerous reporting um, conditions that are put on awarding money can be again reduced um, to encourage people to take up um, this money when it's available. So uh, delighted to record my support. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rees. Councillor Rosie. Thank you, Chair, and, and it's only right to acknowledge and thank the roles that both the uh, Thursday Community Development Trust and the Highland Council officers have played in ensuring this recommendation is before us today. Um, you know, the time scales were tight and yeah, a lot of effort has gone into achieving that by both parties. So yeah. a heartfelt thanks again. Just, I don't want to be negative here, but I want to highlight a, a learning opportunity for us as Ward 2 councillors, um, and that we spent 
little or no time collectively to progress the opportunity that this funding presented us whenever two years ago. So, um, you know, I think the expectation is that the funding will be recurring and, you know, that presents an opportunity to focus on that in a strategic manner and in partnership with community stakeholders. We are now aware of um, various organisations that are willing to come to the table and, um, you know, invest across across the county. So, you know, and when you examine the criteria around the uh, uh, town centre refunding generation, uh, sorry, regeneration funding package, the criteria is clear on what it wants to do. So we've got a fantastic opportunity. So, you know, linking that into um, the learning opportunity with the Rural Tourism Infrastructure Fund, where we quite rightly, I can imagine that our constituents uh, across the ward are, are looking for improvements in their own area. Um, so we've got we've got a fantastic opportunity. So we really need to to focus as ward councillors. Um, let's get round the table with the uh, stakeholders who who want to see positive change and, and work hard at doing it. So thank you very much. I would agree with all those comments, and I think what's quite important to note is that a second tranche of funding is quite small. And um, I think the CCTV proposal gives us an opportunity to, I think it's got a, a wider impact than just that initial first investment, because of course, if we're looking for larger infrastructure projects, it, it protects that investment from vandalism and has a role in um, public safety as well. So although it's a small amount of money, I think the impact could be quite large. And I also appreciate the opportunity to be flexible and work with the excellent organisations we have, like the Thurso Development Trust. Um, Councillor Rees, you have your hand up. Do you want to come back in? Briefly, if that's okay, Chair. Um, I don't actually think Carl was being negative. It was the truth. You know, we were a little bit slow out of the starting blocks there, um, despite Carl's diplomatic prodding. My actual question, Alan, is um, there's been a little bit of debate. Well, I've certainly, it's trying to understand what is the interpretation of town centre? Um, you know, how flexible is the word town centre and um, certainly Councillor Mackey and myself had one or two informal chats about you know does the town centre extend for argument's sake towards the boating pond area um, which is sandwiched between the town centre and the swimming pool area it's that you know how strict are the criteria for what is a town centre because going back to the previous point about flexibility which the chair echoed as well um, it's helpful if there is flexibility yeah so just on that point it's not an unusual question and it's risen at many area committees as well. Uh, the Scottish Government do not prescribe what the town centres are in terms of this funding stream. Essentially, it's for the council to determine. And I think, you know, you know your local town uh, probably better than I do. And it's I think it's about being sensible, you know, and, and what constitutes a town centre. You know, it's up to the council to make that, to draw that conclusion and to develop plans and, and visions and aspirations for, for towns. So, you know, it might not be physically what you might identify in terms of the high street, but these things like, like you say, like the boat inside the harbour, they all contribute to a sense of place. And I think it's more the, the, the sense of place that we're looking at, as opposed to a very definitive red edge boundary, which you might see in say a local development plan. So I don't have the specific answer to that. Again, I think it's about being sensible and being practical and, uh, Sometimes not always drawing a red edge boundary is helpful. Uh, we have to recognise that there's various services and uh, assets that contribute to a sense of place. So it's very much, I think, moving forward. And this kind of goes back to uh, Councillor Rosie's point: is about you know how we work collaboratively and bring together a number of different features and assets that we have in our town to create that 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 sense of place. Uh, so I think I think we do have to take a holistic approach to how towns function and where the investments might take place. Thank you. You have just encouraged me even more, Alan. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Rees. Councillor Rosie. Thank you, Nicola. Uh, very brief, uh, and thanks, Alan, for your your response there. Just again, reading the criteria around the uh, the, the funding, one of the uh, bullet point items is it reads proactive planning, land reform, and support the creation of sustainable, low carbon, and connected places which promote natural and cultural assets, designed in partnership with local communities and stakeholders. 
Now, I'd imagine, uh, I know where uh, Council Reese's mindset is just now, we, we've had discussions about uh, our Riverside Walk area, and that, that's really key and, and why I alluded to RTIF and other opportunities we've got. You know, land reform, again, opens up different avenues for uh, funding that we could consider. So, you know, that's that's what I mean by real opportunity that we've got. So it's just a, a wee bit of mind focusing. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Rosie. Um, I'm not seeing any other hands up, so will I invite Councillor Mackey, would you like to read out your amend amendment to the recommendation, please? Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, sorry, I think Raymond's got his hand up there. I'll I'll uh, I'll secede there and go to uh, go to Brother Bremner and Wick. Late as usually, only just put it up. Kind of I know. Now. I was trying. I was hearing you saying there's no other hands up, and I thought, oh no, I'm hands up, and I was, you know, in in my flummox to try and get my hand up. It took me ages, and you know, um, there's. Uh, I'm just um, wanting to uh, qualify what we've already said. Um, I think um, the, the, the Wiccan East Caithness councillors uh, would like to uh, reiterate once more uh, about the good work that's gone into this and the and the active travel plan. I'd also like to say that um, at our uh, monthly roads meeting, um, we we had another quick catch up um, in terms of what they've been doing because we've got loads of potholes that are um, expecting to be filled and they've already started doing it with our new hot box and a new method of doing it um, and they're going to be updating us uh, daily on uh, taking uh, that forward um, letting us see the new way that they're doing it and hopefully it'll be longer lasting and it'll alle uh, you know, alleviate quite a lot of the concerns as we make progress on that it's nothing to do with the active travel plan but i just thought i'd put that in there um, but what is to do with the active travel plan is they are at the same time managing to start putting in all the drop curbs and they've already ordered the stuff for the uh, pedestrian crossings. Um, I got we got a full update so I'll, I'll distribute that to the, uh, the, the Ward 3 councillors. Um, we're already uh, on, the, on the go with it. Great that we're uh, complementing the uh, CCTV. It's already been uh, let, uh, known to the, made known to the folks uh, like uh, uh, the Royal Borough of Wick Community Council. They're delighted with it. The folks in uh, the WIC uh, community will be delighted as, uh, with it as well. So all good news in, uh, in this uh, report this morning. Very much welcomed. OK, thanks, Councillor Bremner. And yeah, I would echo that and thank you to Alan for his ongoing support with our, our efforts in Ward 3. Ward 2 will catch up. Councillor Mackey. Thank you, uh, Chair. So in, in, in response to the matter at hand, um, I'll I'll go on to the I'll go on to the amendment. We might not all agree on some things, and land reform slightly scares me, Carl. I have to be honest, but we'll we'll, we'll go for something that I think we can all uh, get agreement behind. Um, and this is effectively an amendment to swap out one project uh, for another. Unfortunately, uh, we couldn't get this uh, ahead of the report being published, but it's effectively an amendment to seven point one point three. And that would be to use that residual balance balance for the refurbishment of the precinct clock. Uh, we've received updated uh, costings for that, which have come in uh, at less than what was initially um, presented. And this would be something that would be taken forward by by the Highland Council. Um, the one thing that I would stress to, to members and indeed the public, you know, we understand that wayfinding continues to be important, obviously, because of COVID restrictions. It's maybe um, less of a timious uh, related uh, project that we can take forward. But I am conscious, as we said before, that there is funding and potentially available within the ward discretionary budget this year that we could take that forward and not necessarily be part of the core a town centre fund, but something that we could do externally to that. Now, I believe I have briefed all of the all of the Thursday members in advance, certainly on the call yesterday, uh, and that would be my amendment chair. And um, to effectively the highlighted area is the is the is the new input to that uh, to that paragraph. Thanks, Councillor Mackey. Do any members have any comments or feedback on that? Raymond, your hand's still up. I don't know if that's yeah. OK, um, in which case I'll read the recommendations as they now stand. So the committee is invited to consider and agree investing £16,100 in CCTV infrastructure in WIC, consider and agree investing £25,625 in CCTV infrastructure in Thurso, 
and if I can find, excuse me while I swap screens, it is suggested that £6,384 is taken from the approved 15000 wayfinding budget and supplemented by the residual balance of the 2021 TCF allocation of £2,379 in order to allow the market stall proposal to proceed. This leaves £8,616 for the refurbishment of the precinct clock. Members, are you happy to agree those recommendations? Yep. Perfect. Thanks very much. And thanks, Alan. Thank you, members. Right, if I can get back into the right screen now, we'll move on to item four, which is the Wet and Thurso Active Travel Plans. And I'll invite Neil Young. Morning, Neil. Good morning, Chair. Thank you. Good morning, members. I was going to give you a greeting in Gaelic, but I don't think that would be appropriate after the last discussion. I'd probably get my P45 sent. But um, nice Happy to see you. <laughs> Thank you, Raymond. Um, <laughs> oh, James, what have I started? So uh, nice to see you all. I'm, I'm homeschooling today as well, so I'll, uh, I'm hopeful you're a better audience than my eight year old who's given me a bit of a grief just now. Um, so I want. I had a presentation last time, just to let you know who's with me today. I've got uh, Gordon and Jody from Arup, who are the consultants who, who put together on uh, our behalf, uh, put together the master plans and worked hard with the engagement, etc., getting these to the, the the place where we are just now. And Vicky is here from High Trans, who was heavily involved as well in the process. So uh, I'll bring them in when when appropriate. But. Uh, Hopefully you've all had a chance to, to look a little bit more at the master plans and just understand that they are intended to be a, a vision of what could happen in the towns of Wick and Thurzo. They're not um, they're not a straight jacket as to these must be uh, implemented. These are interventions that are for discussion with the the communities, with yourselves, uh, and there's an opportunity to to amend and either implement or not implement. It's, uh, the choice is entirely up to yours. They're, they're intended to be a vehicle to uh, attract developer contributions to help you as material consideration when you're looking at uh, planning applications, uh, when you're in discussions with Transport Scotland about any interventions that they've got on, on the go. Could you bring in some extra funding uh, from Transport Scotland? Just to think creatively about attracting funding. Funding is always difficult to, to implement these and if you add up all the interventions that are in the, the two master plans, you're looking at several many millions of pounds. So these are not going to be happening in the next sort of six weeks. We're not saying this is this is what's happening in your area. We'll, we'll never be as, uh, as prescriptive as that, but they are there to, to be a guide and to, to assist you uh, in discussions with the community as well and hopefully uh, improving the active travel environment in both the towns. Uh, I'm just going to hand over to to uh, Gordon and Jody just now from Arup just to give just a, a couple of minutes just on what stakeholder engagement uh, took place, where, how we got from, because if you remember these were a review of the active travel audits that were in place almost 10 years ago now or I think they were 2011 or thereabouts. Uh, so the first thing was a, a desktop review of, of the, the audits, what had uh, evolved from the audits, what had been implemented, and in fact not a lot in terms of active travel infrastructure has been implemented since the first audit was done 10 years ago. So I, I'll let uh, Gordon and Jody come in now, happy to answer any questions that you, you may have, um, but we'll just have a little discussion on the actual process that went through, if I can hand over to my colleagues. Uh, morning, members. Uh, my name is Gordon Diamond. I'm uh, an associate director with Arup, and I was the project director for this uh, exercise. Uh, Jody, can I ask you to introduce yourself and uh, just discuss the consultation exercise that uh, we undertook? Yeah, yeah. So, hi everyone. I'm Jody Allen. I'm a transport planner at Arup. Um, work within our active travel team, and I was a, a key member that worked on the Wick and Thurso master plan. So just to give a bit of background and a bit of an explanation of our, our stakeholder engagement stage, we were, were obviously aware that this project started at quite an unfortunate time. It was um, perhaps a week or two before the first lockdown restrictions came into place. So 
we were therefore aware that it might be quite difficult to engage with people um, as they had quite a lot of other priorities and things going on at that at that time. So, um, however, we had uh, a few internal discussions and we decided that we would um, firstly progress with the limited stakeholder engagement um, as there was a, a number of interested parties that, that were keen on taking the project forward. Um, and we did this before before going into the wider engagement. Um, so it was decided that the, the WIC master plan would be delayed somewhat um, just to align with the time scales of the, the WIC street design project, which was being run by Sustrans. And this just allowed both projects to, to run at the same time and be able to promote each other, um, which worked a lot better. Um, and of course, the, the initial plan would have been to, to carry out this project on site um, and to be within Wick and Thurso to, to do site audits, site walkabouts and workshops um, with the communities within each of the areas. Um, however, given the restrictions, um, everything had to be done virtually. Um, and this, of course, perhaps reduced the audience that we were able to reach um, as part of the project. Although in saying that, um, we still felt that the, the comments that we got were really useful and good input from stakeholders and um, they were able to inform both the master plans. Um, and as uh, Neil had mentioned there, it was a review of the existing um, site audits that had been done back in 2010. And we took some of these forward um, and almost relayed them to um, the, the local community to see if they're, they're still applicable and many of them still were, although we did get uh, rid of a few of them. Um, in terms of who we engaged with, um, so it was a list that was agreed by High Trans and Highland Council uh, with ourselves, and that included Highland Council officers, councillors, community councils, um, the access panel, mobility impaired groups, schools, um, and other uh, community groups and constituents. So um, yeah, the, the Thurso project um, was also promoted by Caithness.org. Um, and both were promoted on social media uh, with the hope of reaching the wider public. Um, but that's probably a bit of a, a general background into the stakeholder engagement. Thank you very much, Jodie. I appreciate that. And do you have an idea of the numbers that engaged, Jodie, just to put you on the spot here? I don't yeah, know. I've not got exact numbers. It was it was higher within WIC than it was Thurso. I think we're, we're slightly disappointed with the, the level of engagement within Thurso. And that's perhaps um, lessons learned from us. These were new techniques that we were trying that we've not not used before, given the, the, the current uh, situation that we're, we're in. So um, I want to say there was um, overall about 100, at least for Thurso, and then it was it was higher for, for WIC. We had the benefit of WIC that we were able to, to kind of build and jump on the engagement that was going on with the WIC Street Design Project. Um, so that probably did help um, rally up more engagement there. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that, Jodie. So just summing up, members, I appreciate there's there's maybe some interventions in the master plans that, that you might not agree with or you might think they, they won't work in a particular area. Happy to discuss them just now. But what I would say is that they are indicative of what, what could happen. They're, they're a vision. They're, they're not necessarily what will happen. So if that's OK, Chair, happy to take any any questions. Thank you very much, Neil. Um, can I hand over to members for questions for Neil? And sorry, thank you also to Gordon and, and Jodie and Vicky for attending today. Anyone have any questions or comments, please? Councillor Mackey. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Thanks, uh, Neil and, and, and the team there at ARUP for, for providing a little bit of, of, uh, of context around about the consultation and, and how we've got to this um, to this point. And as I stated uh, uh, at committee before, uh, and just for the record, I think it was you know absolutely the right thing to hold over the item from the last committee in order for us to kind of assess where we are um, this time around. I've just got a, a couple of questions around about the engagement and, and the feedback loop specifically for councillors. Um, I am very, very conscious, and I think um, you guys outlined it quite well, that you know this is a, a plan that began what, back in April or May, I think uh, I'm speaking to representatives from Thursday Community Council who, for example, you know, obviously weren't meeting uh, in, in May. They, they only managed to, I think, get onto Zoom meetings in November. And it's just trying to understand at what stages that we're getting, I suppose, the feedback loop to members. Uh, I have two emails on this subject through my inbox for the last year and a half. 
and I'm very, very conscious that it's at this forum that I know we're only noting, uh, noting the report here. Um, and I'm, I, I have to be honest, I'm now, I'm now content with with the, with, with the chair's solution. I, I think she's going to bring a bring an amendment. I actually think, on balance, that is that is fair, and I'm happy to support that. It's just wondering around about these feedback loops to members. So, for example, if the initial uh, consultation meeting members weren't available you know in the future can we make sure that that information is then disseminated to members who are, are not in attendance the other thing is i think it was mentioned uh in an email from the ward manager back in november and um, that i'll see if i can get the quote up from it but something along the lines of a uh, kind of active travel forums that would would take these forward and, and and look and explore that and i suppose that's a it's maybe more of a question around about going forward uh, Neil, from a Highland Council perspective, is I'm conscious money is incredibly tight, particularly for maybe areas like this that that maybe aren't at the complete top of priority lists for for either uh, central or or devolved funding. So, what do we envisage these sort of forums to look like? And again, going back to the feed, feedback loop, how can we ensure that local members are are getting that information, and we're able to then ensure that you know we can get the widest possible scope and support because at the end of the day I, I certainly don't want to to have something sitting on a Highland Council website that we can't stand behind and say yes this is this is what the, the community wants so so thank you chair thank you very much councillor Maggie I'm not seeing any hands up so I'll go back to Neil to respond if that's okay yeah thank you very much councillor Mackie if I can defer to my, my colleagues at Arab regarding the um the, the engagement uh, if I could do that and then I'll come back to you on, on how we take this forward. Yeah. Yeah, so in terms of the engagement, um, I think we've kind of covered maybe some of it already is in re reference to engagement with members. Yes, Sorry. please. Yeah. yeah, so it was it was decided, I think Vicky had sent out um, kind of more a feeler email at the beginning of the project just to get a, an idea of who would like to be involved. Um, but perhaps there, there's lessons learned there as well, and that going forward, um, there's maybe regular intervals in which um, members could be offered the opportunity to get involved in the project. But um, in terms of this project, we did send the email out at the beginning. Um, we then held um, a virtual site audits in which certain councillors um, attended and came along to that had expressed interest at the beginning. Um, and then it went to wider public engagement. So we didn't hold any of any more of those virtual site audits, but perhaps going forward, mm. we, we could share the, the master plan or the draft master plan at an earlier stage so that comments could be fed back. Thank you, Jodie. Yeah, no, thank you for that. And thank you, Councillor Mackey. I, I, I think there's certainly lessons learned. It's just awkward, just the timing of it with the pandemic and, and everything we would have ordinarily had face to face and public meetings and and uh, come to some ward business meetings and and had that sort of interaction. But lessons learned that yeah we could still do those virtually in terms of the ward business meetings. So thank you. Uh, go, going forward though, I think that they're a waste of time. These master plans if, if they do sit, sit on a shelf and, and nothing ever happens with them. And that's certainly what happened back in 2010, 2011. Um, interestingly, at the Inverness City Committee yesterday. Uh, a councillor made a comment that the, the council have not put any capital funds to active travel for the last four years, which is a, a shocking statistic when you think of the the Scottish government's move and the, the national transport strategies move to um, active travel as being the, the sort of priority for, for any new developments and, and what have you. But we are where we are now. And the, the key is for members in particular, we always look out for for match funding opportunities at the moment sustrans are uh, it's not a 50 50 split which it was previously sustrans and the scottish government will fund 70 percent of schemes and that is a construction of schemes if we fund 30 percent as a as a council the the designing and the development till we get to the construction stage is fully funded so it's 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 quite a quite a good position that we're in just now um certainly I understand from from Malcolm, who's at my eco, that there's a £20 million fund for roads over the next uh, two years and £100,000 per year is going to active travel. <laughs> now, when you think about what's what's up 
£200,000 as a percentage of £20 million. Not an awful lot. But I, I do understand that the council needs to get the roads up to uh, a certain standard. I think we all suffer from that. But it, it's it's trying to get... We've, we've got... Over the years, we've spent a lot of money in, on capital projects that are road and, and vehicle dominated. Uh, and a plea to you members really is to to try and get a sea change into 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 more funding being allocated to active travel projects so we can see the fulfillment of these master plans. You're right, Councillor, Stru- uh, Councillor Mackey, up in, in Wicked Thurso, we're, we're limited in terms of the developer contributions that we can, uh, you know, get get in. Um, so we're relying on communities to to be creative in their. We can't apply for things like um, lottery funding and things like that, but but these communities can. So it, we're quite happy to to come along to community meetings as as plans develop. It might be an idea that we have a an annual update with with the the committee or even uh, twice a year and picking off the the small beer money, the the, the sort of small projects. Don't go for the a big quarter of a million, half a million pound projects. Let's let's do the 20, 30,000 ones if we can. Let, let's start seeing little changes. The only the only thing I will add to that is that to see modal shift, to see people get out of their cars onto active travel, there really needs to be a coherent network. So so some of the small things that 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 we might do might not lead to anything or might not join up. So it's trying to get a, a joined up approach, and that's what this the master plan. As really, so I don't know if I asked your question, Councillor Mackey. I've gone around the circles a wee bit, but we will be consulting and happy to come back to the committee um, again. Thanks very much for that, Neil. Um, I'll go to Councillor Rosie. Thank you, Nicola, and um, thank you, Neil, for your your response. There, you touched on many things that I would have said, so I'll I'll be fairly brief. But look, I think um, listening to uh, uh, your colleagues. Um, report on engagement, I've got to say I am absolutely delighted that there were was it 100 people, you know, that includes groups mm-hmm. uh, that were involved in a consultation. Would I rather see those 100 people be involved in all the councillors uh, in the circumstances we understand now? Yes is the answer. So, you know, I think you, know, you touched on a situation where trying to do these things in the middle of a pandemic using virtual means, it's very difficult, very, very difficult. So. I take my hat off to you. So, um, and you know, it, it points you make uh, about encouraging active travel. Right now, we're in the middle of trying to progress a, a project to address mental health and well-being issues. That absolutely plays into it. Absolutely. So, we'll, again, I'll, I'll go back to my uh, learning opportunity that I highlighted for my colleagues. You know, we've got to get right behind these things. These are the opportunities that are, are being mapped out for us. So. We are a link with the community. That's where we've got to start delivering and play our part with the officers. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Chair. That's okay, Neil. Did you want to respond? Yeah, I'm just going to say that that's fantastic. Thank you, Councillor Rosie. And the mental health and well-being. You might be interested to know. I'm quite happy to chat offline with you about this. We had a project working with Velocity, who are the cycle cafe and, and workshop in Inverness, uh, who worked with colleagues in, in the NHS. And the doctor's surgery was care and doctor um, care medical practice actually prescribed um, cycling and walking uh, because the, the benefits to not just physical health but but mental health was was outstanding. And we had some case studies done that it actually quite emotional when you you actually see the the positive impact that and the predominantly women that took part in this the positive impact that walking and cycling had on these women mental health, but the impact that had on their families, the, the their friends, uh, it was just, honestly, it's, it brings a tear to your eye when you just see what a impact. Um, so working with the NHS, working with doctor surgeries to get people uh, act, act active is, not, is much more than just physical physical benefits. So happy to, to work with you on that, Councillor Rosie, and certainly we can have a little bit of funding potentially um, towards um, assisting in that. That sounds great, and uh, yeah, we'll definitely take that up under the under the Pathfinder project. Neil, thank you. I'll go to Councillor Maggie and then Councillor Reese. Councillor Maggie, I'm I'm quite happy to to go at the end here because I know I've already come in, 
if, if Matthew wants to. It's, it's just a very, very brief comment, so I'm quite happy to go with it. Thank you, that's fine. OK, Councillor Rees. OK, Strun, um, thanks, Nicola. Um, thank you, Neil. I think everything you've said and what Carl said afterwards, I agree with, and I just think whether it's footpaths without holes in them or cycling routes or trees, plants, a lack of litter, all these things, very hard to measure them objectively, but they all contribute to either a sense of well-being or a sense of a community that's sort of, you know, decaying around the edges. So all these projects are fantastic. Um, I hesitate in a sense to say this, sort of, but the, the reality is um, the council, I think, would love to put more money into a whole range of these types of projects. I mean, really, you know, everybody's agreed on it and the benefits of mental health is probably the most pressing immediate um, thing. Sorry, excuse me. Um, I really, I suppose I just wanted to say that and you're not, it's not possible probably for you to see this moment, but it literally within this week, um, the conditions of the roads for cyclists and motorists just this week between George Mus and Wick, three or four sets of 20 and 30 mile per hour speed limits have had to be imposed because, and I make no bones about it, the, the appalling state of the roads. And that is despite the council putting extra money into the roads. Um, your eco is right about his figures. It's not enough. And in terms of communicating with the public who are listening, you know, we just have to be absolutely upfront about that. Um, so that for me personally, there's a strong desire to put more money into cycling, walking, all these things. I just think they're fantastic. And the previous topic we we're talking about, um, you know, we have these wonderful walks up the river in Thurso. Um, however, the state of the benches on the walks is, is a, you know, it's just a little thing, but to be able to put new benches in, it speaks volumes. It's absolutely wonderful for, um, for the public to see that. Um, just the other day, I sat down next to River Thurso outside the Legion, and there's a beautiful new seat there, you know, and it's just such a good thing to see. It's a small thing, but actually it makes a huge difference. My final point is almost, um, I think if you did talking of surveys, a lot of normal people in the towns, I actually, I, I think actually a lot of people don't know what the phrase active travel means we understand it and we understand it well but i think a lot of my constituents don't know what we mean by that i don't know what we do about it but i just think it's important that we communicate so that people understand what these very worthwhile um plans are intended to do um in press releases etc etc um i am fully fully supportive and you know all the good luck with what you're doing and thank you for the presentation today and also um, to our friends from Arab, you know, the quality of the reports we've got. Um, I mean, they are really detailed, so thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rees. Um, I'll, I'll go back to Councillor Rosie if that's okay with, with you, Struan, and, and since you've got a small point to make at the end, so we'll go to Councillor Rosie. Thank you, Nicola, and I will be brief. Um, just to uh, touch on a couple of points that Matthew made. You know, the first was Island Council investment. I think we've got to ask ourselves the question, you know, can we afford not to invest in, in active travel when you can Alan Webster spoke about holistic approach and, and view the things. You know, it's it's a social value and it benefits to to you know people's general health and well being. And the savings that makes across the board, it, it's it's very difficult to ignore. And the and the second point on active travel it goes back to um and the understanding by public. The Thursday Community Development Trust did a, a community survey very early in their, their stages of um, their evolution, and it was the highest return of any similar survey in Scotland. And active travel uh, featured, I forget where it was, but it was pretty high up in the rankings. So I, not only is there an understanding, but I think there's an expectation that we do things here on, on active travel. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rosie. Um, Strip, sorry. Uh, thank you, thank you, Chair. And so, uh, for, first of all, uh, Neil, I think I'd, I think we'd all welcome this coming as a standing item at, at a regular interval uh, for for updates on this, because I think what Carl indicated around about it, you know, it not just being a priority now, but it has to be kind of integrated into our thoughts on how we're making 
um, one, one, the region, you know, an attractive place to, to stay, to work, but also I think there's the other thing around about we're very, very conscious that we are uh, maybe more so than other areas in Highland um, needing to attract inward investment. So whatever we can do to uh, to make our, our towns in particular um, uh, as, as, as best um, accessible as we can, I, I think that that does make a lot of sense. And just going back to, to the earlier point around about uh, engagement, I, I think, uh, you know, logical gateways within the consultation would be welcome um, because I think those that were not involved in the first meeting did not have the, the, the oversight of what was going on. And I think this is why we've got to the point where there's a, about a, a year long window between emails and, and I suppose an update on, on the project at large. So, you know, I, I think one of the things that always frustrates uh, local members is when you get asked about something and you just don't have sight of it. So I think even for those that aren't involved in the working group, um, ensuring that, you know, those updates are going to all members in the ward would make a, a, a big, big difference and would be greatly appreciated. But that, that, that's all for me, Chair, and uh, thanks all for the for the report. And uh, I'm sure I'll, uh, I'll I'll get squarely behind uh, any amendment that uh, Nicola wants to put forward. Thanks very much, everyone. And just picking up on a, on a couple of the points that were raised, um, Jodie, I really appreciated back at the time when we were looking at the Wex Street design project. Um, Raymond will remember that we were going out to consultation on the proposed designs, and I was really concerned that when we went out to consultation, we didn't have a very similar consultation running at the same time. So um, all credit to you for being willing to put the two consultations together to avoid confusing the public. So they're very much linked. And um, the level of engagement, actually, 100 groups that are individuals in Thurso and more in WIC, is, is really positive, actually, considering the context that we were in. I actually would agree with Councillor Mackey's points regarding the engagement process. Um, we were all invited to take part, but the problem is sometimes we get so many emails, something gets missed. So it's just sensible if we can have regular updates. And I think that's a point that we're all agreed that we can take forward for any future big projects like this. Um, there's never enough money to do everything. We can't fix all the potholes in Caithness and put in place an active travel network, but it just makes it, we just have to be clever with the money that we've got and we need to be creative with it. There are other ways to go about it. We have the mental wellbeing pathfinder project. We have the street design project over in WIC. We have the town centre fund, so we just need to be more strategic in how we use the funds that we have. That's not easy to do, but um, part of the amendment that I'm just typing into the chat will pick up a responsibility that lies squarely with members to be able to work with officers and think about how we can make our money go further so that we can we can try and deliver at least some of these priorities as best we can and, and take a practical view on the proposals that are contained within the master plan. So I will read out the recommendations and also my proposed additional recommendation. But um, Neil, I'll let you come back in first before I do that. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just a very, very quick point, but no, I appreciate all the, the comments and um, no, it's been really useful. Uh, and I think, uh, I can't remember if it was Councillor Mackey that mentioned, um, or maybe it was Councillor Reese about behaviour change. And yeah, we could, we could put all these paths in but it's how to get people actually changing behaviour and how to how to get that message across that active travel is not just good for the physical but also the mental mental health and well-being as well. We we work closely with the schools and um, in saying that your uh, your uh, eco is is also the the um, head of uh, I'll get the title right education and learning and we work closely with the schools. And looking at the, we do a hands up survey, well, Sustrans do a hands up survey every year, uh, asking their, their the pupils in all the primary and secondary schools how they actually get to school. And in 2008, I've only got up to 2017, but 2008, there was about 40% of kids were either driven or going by bus. That's across the whole of the Highland Council area. By 2017, that went up to, to, 20, uh, to 47%. So, there's a there's work to be done in trying to get these are these are obviously our future road users. We need to target the kids, the primary school kids, to get them thinking about walking and cycling to school, getting their getting their parents to to cheat, not to drop them off if they only live half a mile away. Look, mum, dad, I, I can walk to, walk to school. I can cycle to school if we have the safe infrastructure. So it does come hand in hand. But we need to work with the schools 
who are the future road users and any any way in that we can get into the schools to deliver some behaviour change um, interventions, that would be absolutely superb. Thank you. Thanks for that. And, and I would echo that. And uh, Neil, I know our daughters are both the same age and you'll probably find as I do that on the days, I find the days when I walk my kids to school, they're usually the ones that ask to walk. They usually give me a row if we're running late and we take the car. And they're so much cheerier because they get some pent up energy out of the way before they even get to school because they can run and play on the walk there. So it's, it's healthy and we should be encouraging it. So to end on that um, positive note, let me just find the recommendations here. The committee is invited to note the contents of the report, in particular the recent policies that identify walking, wheeling and cycling at the top of the sustainable transport hierarchy. Approve the use of the WEC and Thurso active travel master plans as material consideration when dealing with development proposals and as supporting documents for funding bids. Agree to delegate authority to the Executive Chief Officer Infrastructure and Environment to liaise with other bodies including Transport Scotland with a view to identifying funding opportunities and a delivery programme to target early improvements across the Wick and Thurso active travel network. The additional recommendation I'm suggesting members to agree that further local sense checking and discussion will be undertaken by ward members supported by officers as funding becomes available to implement specific proposals. These proposals are considered fluid and adaptable to changing circumstances. Additionally, the Caithness Area Chair and the Vice Chairs will take responsibility for investigating funding opportunities and driving implementation of the plan to improve active travel options in the county. Is everyone happy with those recommendations? Agreed. Fantastic. Thank you very much. It was a good discussion. Thank you, everyone. I promise I won't try any Gaelic next time either. <laughs> Cheers. I don't Thank mind. You. <laughs> Let's not yeah, start that again. Behave yourselves. Oh, it's true. <laughs> I have best friends in this. Okay. Sure, sure Raymond. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm moving on so swiftly. Got, so long as he's got that picture behind his head, we're, we're, we're okay. We're, we're all good. Moving on swiftly, we have an emergency item, item five, which is the proposed garage rent review. And do we have Margaret Ross with us? Yeah, I'm here. Good morning, Margaret. Would you like to introduce the report? Good morning. I would. Um, so this report, well, first of all, I have to say thank you for hearing this today. Um, this report provides information on garage rents for Caithness and invites the committee to set um, a rent level for garages and garage sites for 21-22. And you're invited today to agree a level of rent increase. Um, I don't know if you want me to run over the paper. Or not, um, I suppose the, the, the important points are that develop, developing local priorities for garages and garage sites should be decided at a local level and we're actively doing that. We're at the beginning of that journey but that has started and uh, Councillor Bremner might have something to add to that later on. Um, to set the historic scene, last year you agreed a rent increase of 3%. Um, this year um, the for residential properties, Housing and Property Committee agreed an increase of 2% for residential and that's what we're recommending that you um, ratify today for garages and garage sites. Um, you can see the level of income there, you'll be able to see the level of voids because our garages are have had no great amount of money spent in them for years, the roofs are done, the doors are done and many of them lie void. It gives you an idea in the paper of the average um, rents weekly and annual, which will give you an idea of income and void rent loss. And I think that's really all that I need to draw attention to in that paper. Thanks, Margaret. That was, that was helpful. Um, I'll go to Councillor Bremner and then have Councillor Mackey. Councillor Bremner. It'll be no surprise. Uh, the first thing, good morning, Margaret. Nice to see you, and thanks uh, for the report. Um, this has been something that we've been uh, that we've been actively looking at, and that we're now looking to actively pursue. Um, we have got a pilot in uh, Cadence that we've been discussing at the monthly at the monthly meeting, following on from the environmental budget, where we were considering the uh, the change of certain garage units into off street parking and also uh, other areas that we could pilot in terms of um, other ideas, whether storage units or repurposing the land is um, repurposing the site um, and general rationalisation. Um, 
and for that to be at a local level, but to be given more focus. Um, I think we'll find as well that that's going to be a focus, uh, Margaret, at um, within the chamber on uh, the day of the budget on uh, March March fourth. Uh, bringing a focus on that and other areas in terms of the rationalisation of garages. I know that a lot of work was done on this quite a long time ago. Um, Margaret, you'll recall um, and might be able to, was it 2012? Yeah, 2012, yeah. Uh, big report there, a lot of work done. Um, that we need to uh, we need to capitalise on the work that was done there, refresh it, get it up to, uh, get it up to date and then uh, actively work to see what we can uh, do. We've got, this is an asset that needs sweating. Um, and we have, um, we're by no means uh, doing that. Um, I know that it's a particular focus in the housing and property uh, of the housing and property committee. Um, I'm a member of that. Um, I would uh, agree with the proposal for uh, two percent. Uh, and if I don't know if uh, if I can propose that, and then somebody can second it, or uh, if there's just a, a general agreement with that. But uh, that is one of the. Uh, items that uh, I hope that we can actually look at on at the monthly uh, housing meeting as well. Really good uh, ability to be able to keep that in our focus now. And uh, here's hoping that we get uh, that in a year's time, we'll be able to look back on it and think that we've achieved uh, some uh, some real progress on it. So thanks for bringing the uh, report, Margaret. I'm happy uh, for you to consider any of the points that I've just made there just now, although you've heard my mindset before, we've actively talked about this at the monthly housing meeting. Thanks, for, uh, thanks again, Margaret. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Raymond. OK, thank you, Councillor Bremner. I'll go to Councillor Mackey and then Councillor Donny Mackay. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair, and thanks, Margaret, for providing the, the report. I, I just have a, a quick question. I think I'm, I'm quite content with the with the recommendations. It's more, do we have any sort of um, indication of the, I suppose, a comparison between, for example, uh, how, how much we are charging versus uh, the uh, Pentland housing associations, for example. So, so, sorry for my, my, my ignorance here, but it's just so I can just double check and benchmark that you know, we're not either excessively high or excessively low. Because I remember probably the, the first year that I came in, I think there was quite a hike. Was it the, the first year on garages we got certainly quite a lot of uh, a lot of correspondence there but it, it kind of turned out that it, we were probably charging well below uh, what was what was market value for a very very long time and this was a little bit more of bringing up to equilibrium so so i appreciate if you've got any insight in that market and if you don't know you don't know well, my apologies well the honest answer to your question councillor Mackey, is i don't know i can find out for you and come back to you but i would imagine pentland's rents are higher I would imagine their garage rents would be higher, but I actually don't know. But I'll come back to you on that. Thank, thanks, Margaret. I, I actually did request something from Pentland last week before the, I knew the report was coming. I've not had anything back myself, but I, I appreciate it. If, if we could find out some way, that would be great. I will find out for you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Mackay. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the void garages. And we, you have a, a, a lot of voids in the garages. Why doesn't the council knock them down? And there'd be no voids like it took a Pentland housing has done. Pentland housing has knocked down a lot of their garages because they couldn't, uh, it was all void garages. So yeah. why can't yeah. we do that? We did that somewhere about eight years ago. In is Spring Park and Thursday, and we sold that off, and we've had no problem there since. Yeah, um, can I suggest that you attend the monthly housing meetings, Councillor Mackay, and then you'll be able to inform our decisions because it very much lies with the the local areas, and that you might well decide as councillors that that's an approach you want to take. But the best venue to do that and to have that debate are the monthly housing meetings now. Um, I'm sure Councillor Bremner will make sure that you have a diary invite to that. And we can look at that. And Councillor Bremner has his hand up. I'm sure he has a view to take. Yeah, um, I'm here in Donny there just now. It's That's that's one of the ideas uh, that would be really good to, to look at, Donny, and amongst uh, some of the other ideas, because I think that we've... During the discussion, we've uh, realised that you know some of these garages aren't fit for, fit for purpose. Uh, they're leaking. They've got asbestos roofs. 
Um, they're not worth the rent. They're not worth the investment. They're too small for a modern day car. But there are others where we have the ability where we know that they may not be useful for cars, but they, uh, but they may be useful where people would want to rent them. Um, uh, and it wouldn't take much to get them up to speed in terms of um, uh, useful storage units. That's what's called sweating the asset because we get we get money, we get income out of that. So it's all, it's uh, viewing all the options. That's one of the reasons when we looked at Lock Street, the two areas there, and there are 24 garages between the two areas, um, and there's an awful uh, problem in terms of the uh, on uh, off street parking and on street parking. We've got uh, congestion there. So we've now looked at them, um, we got costs in, we've now, uh, we've, we're pulling those garages down, we're turning them into off street parking with street lighting. Uh, there's loads of ideas there and they're all, and it's all been, uh, that's, that's, that's all been discussed at the, at the monthly housing meeting. So it's absolutely, it's all up for, it, that's, it's, that's where we can make all that happen. So absolutely, Donnie, if you've got those ideas, great. It would be, you know, we can pull down as many garages as you like, we just need to find out where, where we're going to get the, the money out of uh, and, and take it forward. So, yeah, no bother at all. I think that's a great idea. Thank you. Um, Councillor Max, yeah, your hands are all back down now. That's fine. I was just going to ask if there were new comments. Members, there isn't a specific percentage that's um, proposed in the paper, but I think we're all minded to go with the 2%. Is anybody minded otherwise? No. No, I'm happy with that. Okay, so just looking at the exact wording, so I get this right. Yeah. The committee is in, oh, sorry, Councillor Mackay. All the thing is, once you put up a garage rent, you'll find you'll get more garages back in on voids. It's happened in my day, and it'll happen right through. Thank you. I would, I would. Hmm. I would venture to assume that it's a few pence a week. I'm not sure it would make the difference, but I will hand over to Margaret. Margaret, do you have any thoughts on that? Yes, I do. Um, I think there's a figure somewhere in the paper that tells you the difference. 2%. Yeah, so 2% of the average garage rent of £10.23.20 is... 20 pence, is that right? Did I get that right? Yeah, 20 pence. So 2% uh, uh, isn't a huge increase. And I don't believe that we'll get garages back because of an increase of 2%. We're much more likely to get garages back because we're not investing in the infrastructure. OK. So, members, the committee is invited to agree of le a level of rent increase to apply to Keithness garages and garage sites. Are we happy to approve that level at 2%? Yes. Yeah. OK, thank you very much, Margaret. Members, I think that's, that's us for today. Thank you very much.